and uh, after the surfactant dose if the baby needs higher pressure uh, we consider NAPPV if you have done insure if the baby received the first dose non-invasively a repeat dose is considered if there is persisting high oxygen or worsening distress on NAPPV if you have the option otherwise you can go a little higher on the CPAP pressure uh, if you don't have the option for NAPPV and uh, at this time as well you would have a similar approach on deciding whether you want ventilation or just the less invasive technique for surfactant and extubate. So you would have, I mean, even a few hours on ventilation shouldn't harm in terms of the BPD risk, especially in the bigger baby. So if you are worried, keep the tube in rather than exposing the baby to two intubations, but extubate the earliest possible. So even two, three hours is possible. But uh, train your team to recognize these so that the less invasive techniques are used more. We are using Insure or Lisa and uh, if in doubt, you can keep the tube, so don't uh, criticize people for doing that as well, so that uh, we don't expose the baby. Uh, extubate at the earliest possible, except in the tiniest babies under 26 weeks. We prefer a few days ventilation, and the smaller the baby, the longer the uh, duration of ventilation needed. Many 23-24 weeks often stay ventilated for 7-10 to 10 days. Then uh, you may extubate followed i mean following a dart if needed or if weaning well without the steroids uh, wean the nippv to cpap once the baby is extubated and tolerating there is no rush in this process especially if you are using a simple device like a ram canada which is gentle for the baby for nippv but remember that if you are using a ram canada you need a higher pressure to compensate for the resistance in the circuit so around 30 percent more pressure uh, than what you would use otherwise Consider high flow nasal cannula if the baby is stable on CPAP. We use OptiFlow. There are units which use Vapotherm, which works as well, and there are ventilated delivered high flow nasal cannula as well. In babies less than 32 weeks, we consider maintaining high flow around 3 liters or as needed uh, till they reach over 1.25. So at least 3 liters per minute, but if they need more, obviously you give. You can decide based on the work of breathing and the FAO2. And once they reach over 1.25 and they are stable with no distress, we wean this off. So this tends to reduce your intermittent hypoxic episodes. This is because as the baby is building on the feeds, reflex tends to overlap. And whenever there is a slight reflex and they hold their breath with the reflex laryngospasm, the lung de-recruits and then this keeping this background flow tends to recruit it quicker. So you don't have this persisting or intermittent hypoxic episodes, which can be linked to the neurodevelopment as well. So. It's a good practice to do that. You have less septic screens because the baby is more stable and doesn't fluctuate because if they have apnea or desaturation secondary to the hypoxic episodes, you may end up doing unnecessary septic screens as well.